Hi everybody, welcome to chapter 12 in EDUC 103. We're going to be speaking about nutritional guidelines today. Um, I want to stress that these chapters that are at this part of the course, these are all the optional chapters that I've chosen to include. The first day chapters are required, they meet the course objectives, and then I have kind of autonomy to pick things that I think are relevant. I chose the chapters that I chose related to food and nutrition more or less because a lot of you plan to work in early learning centers and because of that I want you to get an exposure of what these nutritional guidelines should look like and what's important with them. So as normal, I present for you the NACI standards so you can uh, see what they look like. Um, you'll notice that we're doing a lot related to child development and learning once again and this seems to be an overarching theme when we're looking at this particular chapter as well. So. Child's diet is important. Um, the younger the child, the more the diet affects them. Um, nutrients help children grow, it helps them become strong, um, and it gives them energy. Um, when, when children get older, nutrients aren't there to help them grow, but it helps them to repair body tissue. So it provides them with energy, but it also helps them to improve where they're at as well. So one of the things that I think is important that the book doesn't mention, but I think is important to note, you need to eat healthy foods yourself. If you're eating in an early learning center or a school, make sure that you know if you're having if the kids are having milk, you drink the milk with them. Um, you drink an apple with them. You drink fruit juice. You should not be drinking drinking pop and eating snacks and cookies because the kids are going to say, "Well, why can't I get that as well?" Basic nutrition is something you should be knowledgeable about. Um, obviously, in schools, you're kind of bound to whatever the district does. But in an early learning center, you have much more control over this. So, what are nutrients? What do they do? They provide sources of energy, they give you growth and maintenance of body tissue, and they help with regulation of body processes as well. So, the dietary reference intakes is the master guideline for nutrition planning in the United States and in Canada. This is kind of what we look at as a way to reduce risk of chronic disease. And if you are working in an early learning center, you're bound to what the dietary reference intakes are really talking about. It's the guidelines that you'll look at and you'll use. So I give this to you. This is directly from the textbook. You can read this on your own. But notice that we speak about the recommended daily allowance. That's huge in both schools and early learning centers. Adequate intake. The estimated, the estimated average requirement. And the tolerable upper intake where basically you can avoid toxicity and health risks if you overdo something as well. So one of the things that you can do in order to look at this is you can list all the foods and beverages you consume in a 24-hour period. Use a computer software program to see the content of the food, see if you're getting in the nutrients you want, um, determine if it's sufficient, um, and then see if it relates to the age and gender group as well. And our book has a great example of this that you're welcome to look at as well. So one of the things that we've seen with dietary guidelines um, came in 2010. I'm not going to open up a link here as I normally say you have access to this. But this basically took research and scientific evidence on how you maintain health and avoid disease prevention. And it's available right here online. It's worth a look. But this is something that if you're in an early learning center, you might want to look at. If you're in a school district and you're a teacher, this is not going to pertain to you because the district is going to have to do this anyway. But this is the most current version based on what you, know, you should be doing for maintenance and disease prevention. So we have some recommendations that will help uh, eating and activity behaviors and, uh, and how it helps people that are two years of age and older. So you have to make sure that the nutrients are provided within the needs that people have for calories. Um, when, all, when all possible, you limit fats, cholesterol, sugar, salts, and alcohol. Obviously, you wouldn't provide alcohol in schools, but the sugars, the salts, and the fat and cholesterol is a big deal. Um, weight management, um, the calorie balance has to be healthy. Um, one of the things that we spoke about earlier in this class is the notion that people from urban environments and poor environments are more likely to binge eat, meaning that the calories aren't consistent. If you have consistent calories, that's going to help you with weight loss and upkeep, and that's something that you have to consider to avoid becoming overweight or obese. So you have to participate in physical activity each and every day. It's why our school system builds in recess. It's why our early learning centers always have playtimes. Um, 
you want to try to do this, and it's part of the Healthy Schools Movement and Initiative. Um, and teachers should be involved in it as well. If the children are doing it, the teachers should be doing it as well. So what should you do and what should you encourage? You should encourage um, children to engage in fruits, vegetables, and whole grain products. Um, make sure that they, they have the vitamins and minerals they need. Um, there should be 20 to 30 percent of the daily diet should have fat. Fat isn't exactly bad, but if you ever do fats, that can promote obesity. Um, carbohydrates are important as well. Um, foods, you know, foods that are high in carbohydrates will give you energy, and that's important, but you can't overdo carbohydrates as well. Sodium and salt is essential, but most people add salt when it isn't needed. Um, fruits and vegetables can replace this, and they're rich in potassium, and they're still providing what you need there. Um, I want to make sure you understand, those of you that are in an early learning center, this notion of food safety. Younger children are at a higher risk for foodborne illnesses. So you have to wash hands, keep food areas clean, cook at a proper temperature, store foods, and follow instructions on food labels whenever possible as well. So, you know, I've mentioned this earlier in the course. You need to visit the Healthy People 2020 document. Um, you can read all these objectives on your own, but this is a document that's going to be a massive initiative in schools and early learning centers, and as somebody going into early childhood education, you have to know this. This is gonna be in your terminal classes when you're getting certified. You'll probably cover this during student teaching, and if you're in an early learning center, you're obviously gonna have a lot of autonomy and control over the food that's served to your population. So the food guide pyramid, the food pyramid has changed. Um, we're showing you now what the new food pyramid looks like, but this is the new revised food pyramid, different from when all of us were children. So let's talk about all the different uh, options here. Grains are there to provide carbohydrates that can be whole grain or enriched. Um, if you can use whole grain products, that's the best. We have found in research that children that start on whole grain are more likely to adjust to it better than a child that has not been using whole grain and then they switch to it. It doesn't work too well for them. It's a great source of fiber and it keeps all nutrients. Um, one of the things that adds with, you know, with your grains, you can have additional calcium, riboflavin, thiamine, iron, and, 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 and niacin, and that's going to be good to improve your bones as well. So, at least half of the serving should be whole grains. Um, it's your biggest serving that you should have. Um, a typical size would be one slice of bread, cereal, one half of cooked rice cereal, pasta during the day. Um, and a child serving size is about one half of an adult's. So whole grains are always best for children. What do you normally see? You'll see breads, cereals, pastas, and rice. This is why your school districts that offer breakfast to kids always have little containers of cereals. There's a reason for this because it starts the day off, a child's more likely to have energy if they invest in grains. So vegetables, um, children should consume about one to one and a half cups of vegetables daily. Um, they offer different flavor, color, different options for kids to try. Um, things like potatoes, squash, carrots are rich in vitamin A. Um, Different, different vegetables will provide different opportunities for children as well. So, fruit, what are good fruits and what do they provide? Um, you should have one that's vitamin C rich and one that's vitamin A rich per day. Your vitamin C's are going to be your more sour fruits, your grapefruit, your oranges, your tangerines. Your vitamin A's are going to be your watermelon, apricots, and your candy. So oils, um, you have to make a decision on, um, on what type of oils you're going to use for cooking. Obviously, we know that oils improve the taste. The problem with oils are this ups up the calories more than anything else. If you can use plant oils, it's the most beneficial. Um, if you have foods that are nuts, olives, that sort of thing, that can help. Um, if the group is low in nutrient aspect and high in calories, um, that's a challenge and you need to make sure you're using correct oils when you're cooking. So milk. It is strongly encouraged that kids drink milk in schools. Um, it, it's something the kids should do two cups a day. It helps improve bones. It's going to help improve growth. I'm a child of the 80s. If you want to Google search any of the I'm going to be big and strong because I'm drinking milk commercials, you remember those. But milk is always going to be a part of our school system. But we find that parents don't really invest in milk at the home level. 
which creates kind of an interesting challenge as well. Um, one of the things that you can do is divide it into half cups, give kids milk four times a day. Um, differentiate. Kids shouldn't just drink chocolate milk or white milk, you can switch between them as well. So what products are things that are going to be strong in that? Cheddar and Swiss cheese, puddings, yogurt, ricotta and chicken cottage cheese, and ice cream. So meats. Meats are high in proteins and B vitamins. Um, it's smaller and less important. Um, but you know, intake should be no more than four ounces on a day of this. Um, but you know, we think basically of beef, veal, lamb, pork, fish, and poultry. Um, eggs are high in, 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 in protein as well for meats as well. So once again, if you want to look at the interactive food pyramid, I provide a link right down here that you're welcome to look at. But you have to remember that age, gender, and the level of physical activity you have really impact the amount of calories that somebody needs. Um, and you can take that in the form of what can improve uh, in terms of recommendations as well. So food labels um, were finalized in 94 and placed on all packaged foods. All manufacturers have to have food labels. And now we have issues where even restaurants have to provide the calories as well. And that's changed over the last five to 10 years. So here's a video on prepackaged food. I'm not going to show it on here, but if you're looking at the PowerPoint, um, it's pro-vegan, but I thought it was interesting. It's worth a watch. And then there's another video that might benefit you. It's a label reading from the FDA, and I found that interesting as well. So that's it. Um, this was our first chapter related to the food section. We're going to cover a couple more chapters related to this. If there's anything else I can do to help related to this, please let me know. Thank you.